The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Athern Trains. Check out all their new monthly announcements at athern.com. The National Model Railroad Association, where membership has its benefits. Check out their website at nmra.org. Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support for what's neat this week in model railroading is brought to you by Soundtracks, leaders in DCC and sound technology for over 30 years. Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award winner two times for favorite sound decoder. For more information, visit us at Soundtracks.com. And special viewers at What's Neat this week, use the code WNTW15 during the month of June 2020, and you will get 15% off of your orders placed at Soundtracks.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show. What's Neat in Model Railroading, show number 119119 for June 13th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And tonight we've got some great folks on Skype with us. Starting at the bottom of the screen here in the corner, I've got Jerry Leone. Hi. Hi Good Jerry. to be here. Thanks for having me, Ken. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you guys. On the other side of the screen, I got Sugar Fire, Joshua Barton. What's up, everybody? <laughs> up on top above Joshua, we've got Campbell Rice. Hello, everyone. And of course, tonight, we've also got James Regeer. Hi, everyone. James is not in Kansas tonight. James is now in his home studio, which is where you feel your best. We've got a lot of cool models on the table to talk about tonight, and we've got some exciting news. I'm going to start out with the Port Harbor Railroad over here in East St. Louis. Wonderful short line railroad that takes care of the commodities on the riverfront and barges and all that wonderful freight that they've got over there. They've painted up two beautiful brand new locomotives. The first one is 8955. This is a GP40, and it's honoring first responders. What a beautiful paint job on that locomotive, the GP40. Also, another locomotive they've done too. The second locomotive is saluting our veterans, locomotive number 5730, and that is an SD40-2. So two wonderful new paint schemes. Guys, I can't wait to see folks out there painting and decaling up models just like these. That's the nice thing about our hobby is the variety of models that we get from the prototype models just like the ones you saw here from the Port Harbor Railroad. Thank you very much, Eddie Bauer, for sending me those photographs. We've now, got a lot now, of... Ken, just a quick question on that uh, on that uh, first responders unit. I know that uh, sadly someone actually stole the horn off of that unit. Have they made any progress in finding that? I don't know the answer to that, but you are right. The night after they were revealed, um, the horns disappeared. So, <laughs> but... Uh, so, yeah. So just anyone watching this, if you should see one of these horns coming on the market, give them a hand, report it. Um, you know, it's, it's a horrible thing to happen. Right. Great idea. Okay. Great idea. Back to the happy, happy part of the show. There's a lot of interesting news this week, and we're going to talk about all of it because you do watch this show to get updated on the news. Now, as you all are familiar with, with the NMRA show here that was scheduled for July, has been canceled. The narrow gauge meet in St. Louis has also been canceled. The RPM meet convention in St. Louis has been canceled. From what I understand, the show for 2022 over in England, that has also been canceled. And Train Fest, we just got notification yesterday that they are canceling Train Fest in November. Um, more interesting news on The Wire this week is Mike Wolf, our wonderful friend over at MTH, has decided that it's time to retire. So he's retiring in 2021, and the company is 
possibly going to change hands or be run by the current employees. It's up in the air on what's going to happen. But I don't really write off MTH. They've got so many nice models. I'm sure that we're going to still see those models out on the market. <laughs> One of the interesting things uh, that we've learned this week is the reason the show in England was canceled, as you know, the Olympics were scheduled for Tokyo this year, and that got put off because of COVID-19. That also caused England to put off their Commonwealth Games to the year 2022. And because of that, hotel space may not even be around for the NMRA show in 2022, and that's the reason for the cancellation of that show. But there is a possibility and folks are working on this, where we may have the NMRA show here in St. Louis in 2022. As we know inf more information about that, I will update you on it. But all I can say, guys, is let's keep our fingers crossed because yes. that would be a great time to have the NMRA National here in St. Louis. So guys, we've covered a lot of neat things. The last thing I had on my list that I wanted to go over real quick is Roman Warjack called me up and actually sent us two photographs. As you recall in the last couple of shows ago, I showed you my photography carts and my process of rebuilding them so I could do my photos outside for the various manufacturers. And Roman had built a cart himself off of the dimensions and the ideas that I had. In fact, he painted it green and put the same off artificial wood on top and it looks absolutely amazing. He built it 36 inches high so that his wife could have dinner parties on it as well as his train <coughs> photography, but he says he's gonna build another one that's much higher. So rock and roll, thank you uh, Roman for sharing the photos of this uh, wonderful table you built for doing photos. I can't wait to see uh, what comes of that, some of the photography that you're gonna do. So with that, I wanna go to Jerry, cause I know Jerry, you've sent us some beautiful photographs of your layout. You are quite well, a modeler. Why don't that's, you? That's quite a compliment coming from you, thanks. Why don't you tell us about some of these wonderful photos? It looks like you've really Photoshopped your smoke and done a great job on this. And this is a beautiful layout in HO scale, is that right? Uh, that, yeah, I, excuse me. Actually, I sent you um, shots from my former layout, the one that I just uh, disassembled last August, and shots from the one before that that was disassembled in, um, 2013. How about that? So yeah, the the smoke is actually real smoke. It's a it's a prototype shot that I had that I that I you know obviously cloned out the smoke and put it into the um, uh, model shots. But um, I, I appreciate you saying that. I, I tend to like to do photographs that look like early morning or late afternoon. You know when you get that golden sun because they, it casts some some nice shadows. So I, I enjoy doing that. Those are um, those are that's some of, that's my sub hobby within the hobby. So that's beautiful. It looks like you've got a microengineering tall steel viaduct right there. Uh, um, it it is yeah. That was that was two layouts ago, and that was that's over Wallace Lake, and which was named after my my in laws because they are you know I, I live here in Minnesota, and I personally I I don't like fishing a whole lot, and I realize that's kind of heresy to say out loud <laughs> in Minnesota, but. Um, I named that for my in-laws who who did do a lot of fishing, but yeah, that that was a microengineering uh, viaduct there, and um, it's uh, it's still it still exists in the closet someplace. I didn't have it on the last layout, but I've kept it because I mean they do a great job. Microengineering does a great job with with that sort of stuff. So absolutely right. Now this is a double deck layout, isn't it? Um, the last the last one I did, yeah, the the uh, the one from 2014 through last August was a was a double deck layout. It was um, in actually it was in two rooms in my den. It was a finished den when we moved into the house, and I there were two giant pass through windows that went between a room that we couldn't figure out what you'd use it for and the den. And I was able to wall those off with a bookshelf, but, but put a couple of pass throughs for the, uh, for the trains to go through. So they actually went from room to room as, as they, um, it was a no licks. So, um, there was, there was no helix on the thing. So it went, you know, as it was going into the other room, it kept gradually getting uh, higher and higher and then went back into the first room and back into the second room again. That's absolutely awesome. And the last two okay. photographs I want to show, because we just seen all the beautiful photos of your layout while you were talking, you built a Z scale building and that was more of a challenge for you because you wanted to see that you could do it. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. It was it was one of those goofy things that you tend to do. Um, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, you know, James is, is is doing this thing with the with this little speeder and the uh, and the, and trying to stick a decoder in that, and it's just a it's a personal challenge. And and the the question in my mind at one point was is number one is it possible to scratch build something in Z scale, and number two is it possible to photograph that model and not give away the fact that it's Z scale and not give away the fact that it's that it's any scale, frankly. That's so awesome. I took the Walther's, uh, or no, the Campbell um, grain elevator that I had an HO on the layout, took all the dimensions off that, and just scaled it down and 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 built this thing out of uh, just. I mean, you you have the optimizer on the entire time, you know. And so I mean, in fact, to make to make the corrugated roofing on it, I used you know one of those what do we call them? Like a block of staples. You know what I mean? The, the mm-hmm. that you'd put in your stapler and oh, rub tin, fo- yeah, yeah. tin foil on it to get the you know the corrugations on it. So oh. yeah, that was the challenge. And then I was able to shoot the thing, and and if it gets lit properly, you you kind of can't tell that it's Z scale. So that was that was a challenge. You know, and and at one point, frankly, I I looked at that and I said, God, this is doable. Wouldn't it be cool to build? my layout my it was 14 by 35 layout in z scale next to the layout you know what i mean so that you'd have two of the identical layouts in two different scales and then i realized that walther's doesn't make cornerstone buildings in z scale and everything would have to be um scratch built and that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great idea stop thinking about it so yeah that's absolutely amazing i, I often thought uh, you know, Ken has that model of his house off in that corner of his basement, and it has his uh, it has his garden railway represented. And and I've often like looked at and thought that it would be neat if he could, you know, replicate that garden railway in Z scale. Yeah, That's exactly. That's a little bit big for HO scale, but it would be uh, it would it'd be awesome. Um, the models of models. Jerry, you're also quite a good videographer. I know we, Thanks. you and I talked in our test Skype about video. Where can folks see your wonderful video work that you do? I do. Uh, th- thanks. This is a great plug. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I do a lot of video work for Model Railroad or Video Plus. I have a monthly show called um, Off the Rails that I've been doing for the last four years and now in its fifth season. Um, that's that. Like I said, that's a monthly tips, tricks, tools, and techniques. It's kind of weird little stuff, things you can't throw out, things that you can repurpose for something else. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a brand new show for them this fall. I, I'm we're in the process of building a house right now, so um, I'm going to be building a layout <laughs> and 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 doing some planning for that on video and and building on video. And then I've done a lot of how-to stuff for for MRVP. So you know how to do rock castings, how to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, use Arduino's on a model railroad, that sort of stuff. So really it's cool. it's a lot of fun. I you know I spent 38 years in advertising, um, part of part of which was was you know directing and writing TV commercials. So it's kind of like down the same alley a That's little awesome. bit. That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to come Thanks. we'll come back to Jerry real quick. Yeah. I'd like to talk about these wonderful N scale buildings that I have on the table. These are from micro engineering folks. That's right. They don't just make some of the best track in the world that we all love to use because it makes our layouts look very detailed and it does. But I've got some wonderful buildings here. I'm going to start with the brown building here on the end of the table right next to the NCE power cabs. And that is called Murphy Manufacturing. All of these dioramas were built by the guys down there and they use them for trade show displays. The blue building right here is called Transworld Trucking. So that's more like a truck dock building with an office on the end in end scale. The yellow building right in front of that is called Petroff's Plumbing Supply. And that's also kind of a warehouse building, just like the building that microengineering's in with the office off to the corner of the building. And they've also got mm-hmm. two engine houses that I have on the table here. This double stall engine house is simply referred to in their catalog as the modern engine house. And that's a two-stall, N-scale building, quite capable of holding at least two to three locomotives straight through it. And the last building I've got that looks like uh, a facility is actually um, a modern um, Doyle's uh, office factory type building on their, um, the way it's listed on their sheet. And this has got a drive-in for the train to roll into, and it's also got truck docks and an office on it. So very interesting that microengineering has done this with N-scale buildings. And some of these buildings are also available in HO scale. I just didn't have room on the table to pull all of them out. 
Now, as you recall, last uh, two shows ago when we talked about microengineering, we talked about their ladder system. And I'm going to have Campbell talk about that in a minute. But the one thing I've got that we didn't go into in great detail is this number five turnout. This is called the 5A, and it's also part of the ladder system. But what's very interesting on this is watch. As I curve this, the end of the turnout is flexible so that you can work this into a situation where maybe your track doesn't line up quite well, or you can actually have a curve right off the turnout before you go into your industry with the two siding tracks. So something interesting to check out on their website, the 5A standard turnout. This is a number five, all DCC friendly and ready to go with points that as you flip them, they lock so that you don't have to worry about even putting a ground throw on this turnout. I love the guys at Microengineering. Campbell, you sent us four pictures of your new layout and you use the number five ladder track system on it. Would you like to talk about that? Uh, it makes a, a, a great difference in, in the room that you can uh, allow space in for your yard. I mean, it's so compact. To me, it looks much more realistic. Um, I, I probably will never do another yard without that ladder track system on it because it is uh, it just works. And uh, I don't get any derailments off of it or anything. I, I really like the microengineering track. Um, they do a good job with it. And, and most importantly, it's made in St. Louis, in the United States, right here in the county that I live in. <laughs> so, That's you know, it's, it's, it's nice that it's, it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes from my house. And if I'm in the middle of something and I need it, need it hey, I could run over here and get it. That's absolutely but, uh, right. They do make a nice product. And, and as you can see here, it, it, it does work quite well. Now, Campbell, you stopped by here the other day. I got to meet your wonderful wife. And yes. you told me a story that the brand new layout that you just built is well, going to be moving. This is the same thing Jerry was just talking about. Jerry's well, building himself yeah. a new basement. I understand My you- My heart goes out to you, Campbell. <laughs> uh, I'm doing it so much, I'm used to it. So what, do you oh, do, what are you guys doing, Campbell? Tell us. Well, we're gonna downsize a little bit. You know, life changes when you're occasionally in. And um, when we got this house, it was like we had a week to get it. And, and um, I had a father-in-law with me who's no longer here. And um, but in other words, we just got way too much house for just my wife and I. So we're we're actually having a new house built that's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, but I'll still have a big basement, and that's what counts. <laughs> it does. Right. So just make a basement and then put a house on top of it. Lay out the basement. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Cool. It's it's it that layout down there's been moved. You know, from from. Uh, from Arkansas to here, so it could get moved across town just as easy. Well, and as, as fast as you do it, I bet you can take it down from the uh, house <laughs> you got currently and put it up at the new one same day. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> same week would be great. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sure it would be, but, yeah. you know, sometimes it don't work that easy, but, no. yeah, we'll see. But I've got it, you know, I've got it written down in my calendar to appear at your house sometime next week, and I'll do an interview interview with you and show your new layout before you tear down your new layout on the What's <laughs> Neat show. We, yeah. we just finished production of the July's uh, What's Neat show. In fact, I was just talking to the editor a few minutes ago and sending some additional photographs to him. That show is all about soldering. We take all the mysteries out of soldering because it's, it's, it is a very complicated subject because there's so many different tools on the market, resistant soldering rigs, pencil rigs, um, soldering with air. There's all types of different ways to solder wiring, track work, or scratch building buildings out of brass stock. It's, it's a fun adventure, this 52 minute video for July's What's Neat over at Model Railroad Hobbies Magazine. My lovely wife, Michelle, opens up the video where she does that part where she says, What's neat, this show starts right now, and it's all about soldering. So thank you very much, Michelle, for playing along with that. I had to do that because of COVID. I can't have all you guys over here, and I still have to keep up production on that wonderful show. I'm looking forward to being able to get out and do interviews and interviewing people at their layouts again. And starting with uh, our July, month of July, we're going to try depending upon the news and how things go, doing shows live here in the studio again with all the guys sitting around this wonderful table, albeit about six feet apart, and we'll probably be wearing masks, which will be awkward, but we wanna keep everybody safe and healthy until that vaccine arrives. So with further ado, without further ado, I wanna go back to Jerry, and, and the reason for it is, 
Um, we're going to talk about the NMRA, and that's why we've got Joshua Barton and James Regeer on tonight, because they were both heavily involved in the planning of the 2020 show that was canceled. Mm -hmm. So they know a great deal about the NMRA. I, of course, have been involved with the NMRA since uh, the late 80s and thoroughly enjoyed what the NMRA had done prior to the internet. For all of us, it was our internet. It was our way to get to meet people. In fact, the folks that I met at NMRA local meets here in St. Louis are lifelong friends at this point. And I've learned so many modeling tricks and techniques and tips, not to mention the fact that they created standards for example, DCC, the reason that all the systems work together was the NMRA had the insight a long time ago to create right. standards so that there would be a certain methodology so that all of our engines and all of our throttles would all work together, which is an absolute blessing. But Jerry, tell me, I know you're very intimately, you know about, you are an MMR, in fact, aren't I, you? I'm not only an MMR, I'm a vice president of the NMRA. You like, are. I, I started out as a, as a lone wolf modeler, and um, when I was wanted to work on my MMR, uh, the local NMRA division needed an editor for the newsletter, and I said, well, God, here's a great way of getting volunteer your volunteer certificate, never expecting that I would get involved with the entire organization at that point, but you, you you kind of get sucked into it in a good way. You know, you meet some guys who introduce you to some guys and then you find some other guys and, and, and Joshua, you know, uh, you're nodding. It's, you, you, it kind of grows on you that way. And, and you realize that it's just kind of a big family that way. So, you know, I, I got involved with the NMRA back in the late seventies and dropped out in the early eighties when I decided um, I needed to play in a, in a uh, bar band for 20 years um, and got back into the NMRA. I, you know, I, I did the, the local division thing. I did the local region thing. I, you know, I, I got involved with NMRA national in 2005. So it's been 15 years. I've been working with the national organization and it's, 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 you hear people say this. And if you don't, if you don't live it, it sounds like a bunch of BS, but it's like when you volunteer and you get involved, it's a lot of fun and, and it makes the hobby bigger somehow. It, it just it makes the hobby more fulfilling and it, which sounds pretty hokey, but it's it's true. It, it's I, I, like I said, I started out as a lone wolf modeler and 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 I never wanted to get involved with any of this stuff. And I'm I'm tremendously uh, glad that I did. It's just been really a great experience. That's awesome. The, the, com the camaraderie that I've found yeah. in the NMRA is just amazing. And now I'm looking into starting the AP program and getting my Golden Spike certificate and, you know, working my way from there. So not only can I learn, but I can show people that I have learned and that people can help and that I can help other people. And I think it's a great program, you know, and, and, you get out of it what you take out of it, you know, as little or as much as you want. Exactly. So that's one of the best things about it. The, right. the achievement program has a lot of people who are detractors of it because they don't want to get their modeling judged, so to speak. And what what I guess they don't realize is that it's not you're not we're not telling you what's wrong with it. We're telling you how to make it better. Correct. You know what I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, the, the achievement program, I mean, when, when I went through and I got my, I, I have eight certificates, eight of the 11, the last certificate I got was cars. You know, you have to scratch build some cars. And frankly, the only thing I had ever done was glue the brake wheel, you know, onto an Atherin car and call it a day. So to scratch build cars was like, I don't know how to do this. But you come out the other side and you say, I scratch built some cars and I had fun doing it and I want to do more of them. It's right. It's, right. It's, it's, yeah, right. Right. it's a learning. There's, there's almost no other way to make your hobby so fulfilling as learning from people who've done it and been there who, who can kind of teach you, you know, tricks and tips and things like that, that it, where you turn around and you say, Holy cow, I did this. It's it's just it's a I think it's that's one of the biggest benefits in my mind of, of the uh, the NMRA that and as Joshua said too the 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 camaraderie you you 
we, we talk about this so often in the NMRA. You, you know, you can tell people, I've gone in to the NMRA, I, I, I have a couple of best friends who I met through the NMRA, but you can't sell that to people who haven't experienced it. You can't promise them that they're gonna walk into a meeting and, and walk out with their, their lifelong best friend. But that's what happens in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases that happens. So it is, it is the camaraderie is wonderful. My, my best friend nowadays is an NMRA member and, and it, well, all my train buddies are NMRA members. And I'm not saying that non-NMRA members aren't, you know what I mean? I, I don't wanna, I'm not dissing non-NMRA members, but it just happens. I met these guys and we had so much in common and they all happen to be NMRA members, so. Right, NMRA right. stands for National Model Railroad Association. It's Oops. been around for a great many years. It was, it was formed just about the time that Model Railroad Magazine started getting into business, and that was back in the 30s. Sure. Now, they also have a wonderful magazine. Tell us about that, Jerry. NMRA Magazine um, is, is uh, it started out as a house organ, so to speak, the NMRA Bulletin back in the you know, 40s, 50s, 60s. Today, it's a high-quality publication. It's edited by Cynthia Priest. Um, yes. The articles in it are, um, are are wonderful articles. There's there's some NMRA centric stuff, which is always interesting to read about what's going on in Arkansas or what's going on in uh, Oregon and what is this division out in in uh, Massachusetts doing. But then there's modeling articles in there too. So they you know there's a lot of stuff in there in every issue for for people who who you know I mean it's 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 pretty well rounded that way. That is so nice. true. That is so true. How many years, Jerry, have you been a member? Well, I, I, like I said, I started in the late 70s, dropped out in the early 80s, and then rejoined in 1999. That's amazing. When we, built, we, built the, we built the basement with the house above it, and, and um, it was like 20 years of... of, of, of I, 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 the story I always say... Say what? Yeah, the story I always tell is that I was worried that I wasn't going to go deaf fast enough in my old age, so I decided to spend 20 years in front of a 110 decibel a guitar amplifier <laughs> in a smoky bar. Um, but uh, I got back in in 1999 when, when I pretty much had enough of the band, and um, it's been the NMRA ever since. For those viewers out there that would like to get involved in that, and what comes with that is obviously the, the friendship, the companionship, the what you learn, the magazine, the local meets in your area that are set up by NMRA members where you can go to a local convention. Ours is gonna be in November here in St. Louis. And as far as I know, that one's still on, and we're gonna talk about that on the show. There's so many different benefits that come with it. They have insurance for modular layout clubs and for groups. They so right. can insure your trains or a modular club if you're setting up at location, the insurance covers you for liability. That's the fine print that you can read about. Tell us what website would folks go to to learn more about the NMRA and to join? www.nmra.org. Org. It's um. It's the NMRA's official website. There's a big button on the on the homepage that says join or find find out more. Um. It's it's pretty simple. You know the dues right now are. You know you can you can become a member for fifty bucks a year. Uh, if you want to have the magazine along with it, it's. I think it's a real bargain. Uh. It, that's seventy eight dollars a year. Uh. So you're paying only twenty eight dollars for a, 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 you know, a world class magazine. Um, and, and you get the benefits of the NMRA too. Plus, awesome. you know, we've got things like we have um, 150, over 150 national convention clinics that we video, uh, I, would have said, I was gonna say videotaped, that we recorded on video that are able to be streamed online. So if you can't make it to a national convention, you can see a lot of the clinics that, that have been um, at conventions since 2002. Um, you know, that's just one of the one of the many benefits. It, it's it's you don't necessarily have to live in a big metropolitan area or near the national convention to experience it. Tomorrow, um, we've got online uh, twelve hours worth of live live streamed clinics on on Facebook. You don't need to be a member um, to see those things. And you know, there's there's um, well, it's whatever it is. It's there's twelve clinics from guys uh, guys and women from Australia to Britain. So there's, there's a lot of little benefits to, to, to membership of, of the NMRA. And as you said, it's the camaraderie. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a feel good thing. It's awesome. And it, that's not just nationally, like you said, it's worldwide. It is. 
It is. We've got we've got regions in Australia. We've got region or uh, divisions in um, New Zealand, Britain. There's a European region. Um, we've got members in Japan and and China for that matter. So it really is an international organization. And uh, um, it, what what's kind of cool is that if you do go to Britain on a vacation, you can look up the, the the British region there and find out and find some members who would be more than happy to have you come into their house and and, and look at their layouts. That's awesome. So it, 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 that's a, a, another part of that camaraderie. That's fantastic. Um, I want to say that uh, next week's show, we're going to talk about modeling trees. And, and we're actually not probably going to show you how to do it, but we're going to have many different types of trees to build. Pine trees, wire trees, sagebrush armature type trees, and of course the super trees using those wonderful small soft uh, armatures that are available from uh, Scenic Express. But there's so many different ways to scenic your layout, and the thing about trees is they apply to all scales. O scale, I mean some of the O scale trees I actually take small bushes in the backyard and I flock them out with the ground foam and they make magnificent G-scale and O-scale trees. And that's something that I'm working on for the August What's Neat video, so I thought it would be timely next week to talk about that. And we're going to be talking about the NMRA for many shows coming up because now that we have the possibility of maybe having a show in St. Louis again, I want to keep that alive and well and see if we can get a lot of our viewers out there to join and become members of one of the best family organizations in the world, all about the best hobby in the world, model railroading. So what do you think about that, Jerry? And you're going to help me with that and we've got other special guests scheduled we, we to have, come on. Yep. That's exactly right. We, we, we've got some people lined up to, c to come on and talk about, you know, very specific areas of, of, of the NMRA that people may not be aware of. Um, and uh, it's just it, when you scratch the surface, you find that there's a whole lot more underneath. Than, than you really realize. It's not just a bunch of guys who are getting together talking trains. There's just a lot of benefits to, to membership like that. And, and, and a lot of people just just don't know how many and, and, and the breadth of those benefits. That's awesome. Everybody got to meet Brad Joseph. And uh, who else did we have on the show? We had, um, help me out with that, uh, James? Uh, Bob Amsler. Bobby had, Amsler? We had, Bob, Bob. We had yeah. um, John Schindler. And John Schindler, all those sure. guys. We showed John Schindler's operating layout, and when he was operating, he had a whole group of gentlemen down there, and they were all yeah. members. It's absolutely amazing. You know, it reminds me a lot. It's just, look, it's the best hobby in the world, and it's a great organization, and it's worth checking into. Also on the table tonight, and I don't want to skip this, uh, This is I usually start out with my Atherin photography, but I haven't shot any models this week outside. Atherin has announced brand new GP15-1 locomotives, and they come in a variety of paint schemes. I've got the GA. TX locomotive on the table, which I've had, and they're redoing that right now in that paint scheme with all new numbers. Mike Buddy, they're doing Frisco in the GP15s. They're doing Union Pacific, BNSF, BN, and of course the, G, uh, the other units are Chicago Northwestern, and just a lot of great paint schemes. You can check it out. They've got a brand new PDF on their website showing these locomotives. They come with Tsunami 2 decoders and sound and or without sound. So in the Genesis line, this is all tricked out and detailed with plastic air hoses, just wonderful detail throughout the brand new GP15 announcements from atherntrains.com. Be sure to check I, that uh, out. I uh, have been on Atherin for quite a while to do the uh, GP15 with the uh, baby wings on it. So I noticed that they, they finally came out with it. So uh, that's probably good. A couple of those are gonna be on my list, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of pages oh, of material. Yeah. California those are, those Northern's on there. Too. I'm sorry, go ahead, James. I walked over you. Well, I was just saying those are neat engines too. I, I you know, the little baby tunnel motors with the, probably with the see-through screens and all, all of that. Like it's an, it's, it's amazing the engineering that Atherin has come up with to yes. allow for those see, see-through screens. No, it really makes right. a difference. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm very happy with. Uh, now, next week on Tuesday, I am going to be, you remember Caboose out in Lakewood, Colorado? Kevin Rubel is going to have me on their show. And James, what's the name of that show? That's uh, the uh, Virtual OS Check-In uh, for Caboose Hobbies. Very and nice. And you can go to the Caboose, uh, you can go to, go to their Facebook page, and you can get a link for the stream from there. Okay. And it's also on YouTube, and that's going to be recorded next uh, Tuesday, I think around uh, 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock, and I'm going to be on the show. They'd like me to talk about photography and some of the beautiful, my passion for the hobby, essentially, is what they'd like to know about. 
So that's almost all the things on my list. I want to say that next week, too, we're also going to show one of these microengineering turnouts where I'm going to paint all the individual details on it separate of the wood ties. And it comes with a package of details, all the nut and bolt castings and all the clips and other things and the ground throw for the turnout. It's a uh, white metal dummy ground throw, but it looks really neat. But once you see this turnout painted with all the hardware individually painted and rusted out separate from the ties, it's going to be immediately obvious the detail that I talk about. It's kind of hard to see just the way it is, but next week we're going to exemplify that. And check out their website, and I've got their phone number down on the bottom of the screen because they like to conduct business, i.e. through the phone, taking orders by phone, or there's a PDF that you can download on the microengineering.com website where you can and fill it out and give your credit card information and mail it to them or fax it to them or email it to them and they'll be happy to place your order. And so guys, with that, I wanna just go back to you guys, James, welcome back to St. Louis. I know you were in Kansas with your father. Were you able to get any more work done on that track mobile? Well, I've been working on it um, and this was this was actually a very uh, very challenging week. I, like I, this, was, this was where I got just a little bit cocky. I thought, you know, I got the LEDs in there. Now it's going to be like locomotive. I'm going to just route them and be there's no room to hide anything on that track mobile. <laughs> so So yeah, I've I've been having to uh, I've been having to rethink some of the uh, some of the plans that I that I thought would work. Um, so it's 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 coming along, and I think it's I think it's going to be pretty nice when it when it's finished. Um, it'll have I've already got the LEDs mounted here wow. um, on the side of it. I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but uh, for the uh, right on the side on the railings here for the road signal lights, that it'll have the hazard flashers going on. Um, it'll have the uh, tail lights and headlights. Those will also those will all be wired in so that. You know, one function will light both the headlights and taillights on op opposite ends of the locomotive. And then another set of LEDs for dual uh, opposed flashing strobes on top, of the, on top of the cab. And Allison actually took a look at my coding. Remember, I was telling you, she's, she works, and she works in, uh, she works uh, computer science and engineering for a living at, uh, at WashU here in St. Louis. She took one look at my coding. I said, I need I need it to do a double flash, but I need it to do do the timing right so that it doesn't interfere with, with itself. And she made two strokes, had the whole thing going, and it, it was just instantaneous. So so yeah, the uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, planning is done in terms of the software that's gonna go into this and the uh, and some of the and some of some of the goodies, but it's still going to be a few steps to actually get it all to work in that very small package. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. James, I'm going to challenge you to put sound in that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the, uh, that's that's going to be the challenge too. Just how the speakers are going to fit in, and to try and get enough weight in there so that I didn't lose too much overall to do this whole conversion because as you know as small as these as small as these track mobiles are there's not a lot of weight to them and you know you'd want it to pull at least one or two cars without trouble um so there's there's still a few challenges left to overcome does somebody you know, make well, a sound file for that what's that does someone make a sound file for that look that uh, track mobile as a matter of fact this is a uh uh, TSU 1100 uh, decoder, and it's their GE sound set, I think it is, yes. Um, and on it is listed a, um, is listed a Cummins diesel. Huh. And okay. so that's, that's what the track mobiles yeah. have in them. So I'm hoping that'll sound accurate to the prototype, and then you have a whole host of horn selections right there on the decoder, too. So, um, so through it all, we're going to get something that, something that sounds reasonably right. I don't know how you do that, James. It's amazing, so, James. You're nuts. <laughs> Guys, we've lost Joshua well, Barton through the advent. Well, I'm at it, I do want to, I, I do want to give a shout out to uh, to Perry Lambert. Uh, now, I visited him last week in Kansas, and uh, he uh, he had a whole bunch of different projects. I, I know your uh, video, Ken, uh, from from a few years ago, the What's Neat video. This is nuts. Uh, remember, he had that uh, Missouri Pacific locomotive. That had the rotating beacon, mm -hmm. um, like the like locomotive that I built. Right, Perry right, says right. that he I... built that locomotive uh, 
for uh, for Joe Steinman. Oh, okay. So, so uh, so that was uh, that was kind of neat to talk about that. He also showed me how to deal effectively with these 0201 LEDs, which I tried the Texan EC showed me, which was a much lower uh, soldering temperature than I'm used to. Worked like a charm the first time. So uh, shout out to him uh, for for some for some tips and techniques. Um, I, I look look forward to uh, spending some time hanging out with him when I'm in Kansas from here on out. Right. All right, guys, and so with that, I'm sorry we lost Joshua Barton. I'm not sure technically what happened. I tried to get him back while you were talking, James. But His I, phone died. Is that right? I, I hate, hate, sometimes the technology just doesn't work out. That's the first time we've ever had someone drop off on the show. But with that, I um, think we're going to wrap this one up, guys. Is there anything else that we want to cover? We're coming to an end of 119 here. No. No. Nope. I appreciate I'm good. you having me on. Thanks, Ken. No, you did a fantastic job. And give us that website one more time for the NMRA, Jerry. It is www.nmra.org. Rock and roll. So next week is the last show that we're going to do this month, and lots of preparation is going into, like I said, the trees and the painting of the turnout and the other items and things that we're going to talk about. Don't forget the NCE power cab system. I've been using it all week on my layout, and I know James and all the guys on last week's show. That was amazing when everybody held them up. And yes, I did order a unit for Michael Buddy. That power cab is on its way. So I can't wait to do a, a beginner's video with Mike to show how it gets set up on his layout, and then it'll give us a chance to see his layout and watch his smile as he operates his sound units. So guys, the best hobby in the world with the best people in it. This show is made for you by us, Simple Model Railroaders, giving you an update every single week on what's new in the hobby, new products, new ideas, and the latest news. So with that, gentlemen, let's go run some trains. You betcha. All right.